Alright everyone, welcome back to another Top 10 Commander video. This time we're looking at the new set, Strixhaven School of Mages, and we have a ton of cool cards here, and believe me, there are more than just 10 good cards in the set if you're looking to build a deck in Commander. And as always, before the last card is revealed, I will give an honorable mention to all of those. But starting it off here, we have number 10, Professor Onyx. Professor Onyx is really here on this list because of her triggered ability of Magecraft. Whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, each opponent loses two life and you gain two life. That right there is enough to keep her on this list at number 10, because as you know, we get Planeswalkers that are a dime a dozen, and they usually just do the same thing as other Planeswalkers, maybe slightly different, but they're never really exceptional, not like they used to be. But all of these abilities are valuable. Her plus one, you lose a life, look at the top three cards of your library, put one of them into your hand and the others into your graveyard. Her minus three, each opponent sacks a creature with the greatest power among creatures that player controls. Her alt minus eight, each opponent may discard a card. If they don't, they lose three life and you repeat this process six more times, which are all pretty powerful. That alt can be devastating, but really again, it's that triggered ability, which is really gonna add to a spell slinger strategy if you happen to play black. Then number nine, we have Tenazir Quandrix. The first Elder Dragon on this list, and the Elder Dragons are quite powerful. I think they're also just good as one of the 99. I think they're just good creatures all around. Tanazir, while not being super creative, is pretty darn powerful. You get to double the plus one plus one counters on a creature, and then whenever Tanazir attacks, you may have the base power and toughness of all other creatures you control become equal to Tanazir's power and toughness until end of turn. So this just means that if you have any kind of plus one plus one counter strategy, any way of making Tanazir bigger, it just means that every other creature you have, even if the base toughness was already large, if you get Tanazir even larger, their power and toughness is going to grow, so that's going to be pretty insane. Flying and Trample, so you definitely have commander damage as an option. And then number 8, we have Killian Ink Duelist. I think by far creativity is what I factor into the most in my top 10 videos. I of course factor in other things like power, versatility, but Killian is all of those things here. This condition where spells that you cast cost two less to cast if they target a creature, that's pretty ridiculous. I mean, there are several ways you can take advantage of that. You could take advantage of that in a Voltron way, so you can make your Killian bigger for less mana, and with Lifelink and Menace, you can deal some damage easily, or you can play the removal game. And for only two mana as a commander option, I think Killian is by far probably the biggest sleeper in this whole set. Then number seven, we have another pretty powerful commander option, but this one I think is going to see a ton of play because land strategies are just super strong. Jadzi Oracle of Arkevios, or you could play the other side journey to the Oracle. I mean, either side here, you're going to get power. With Jadzi, you do have to pay eight mana, but the benefit here is that you have a way of bouncing her back to your hand. You discard a card and you return Jadzi Oracle of Arkevios to its owner's hand and you have a powerful Magecraft ability which is going to play into how you build this deck. Whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, you reveal the top card of your library. If it's a non-land card, you may cast it by paying one mana rather than paying its mana cost. If it's a land card, you put it onto the battlefield. That right there is insane and definitely a reason why Judzi is eight mana. But you do have that protection there, you can bounce her back to your hand by discarding a card. The other side journey to the Oracle is not that bad either. You may put any number of land cards from your hand onto the battlefield, then if you control eight or more lands, you may discard a card if you do return Journey to the Oracle to its owner's hand. So you have two ways of getting Journey to the Oracle back to your hand, Jodzi back to your hand, and then replaying it without having to pay a commander tax. I think that's really the powerful part of this card. And if you thought Tatiova was powerful, while Tatiova might be cheaper, easier to get to for only five mana, here you have Resiliency, you can bounce her back to your hand, and that ability, I think, is just crazy. It's super easy to take advantage of. There are a ton of instants and sorceries that just get you lands, and that's going to synergize so well. And then number six, we have Belladros Wither Bloom. The only other Elder Dragon on this list, believe it or not, I think they're all pretty good. Some are definitely more powerful than others, and I think Belladros is the most powerful of the Elder Dragons, without a doubt. Each upkeep, you get a pest creature token, so it's kind of like Dragon Broodmother. You do have a resilient commander here because you have a life gain strategy to support it. But really what makes Belladros powerful, despite being a whopping seven mana for a commander in Golgari colors, you can pay 10 life and untap all lands you control once a turn. You can do this on your opponent's turns, making it a lot more reasonable to pay that seven mana. So 
Golgari has always been powerful in Commander. With Belladros, it just seems like the rich keep getting richer. And then number five, we have Storm Kiln Artist. These abilities, I think whenever you're rewarded with just doing something simple that you normally would do by getting a treasure token or drawing a card, any kind of mana advantage just for simply casting an instant or sorcery spell or copying one is just ridiculous and Storm Kiln Artist is going to be a staple in Spell Slinger decks, no doubt. Maybe not competitive, but I don't make my top 10 decks around what's considered competitive for competitive EDH. I think similarly, if you were to compare this with another staple in Commander, Pitiless Plunderer, although I would say for combos it's a lot easier to combo with Pitiless Plunderer, for decks that need these kinds of triggers for your instants and sorceries, you get mana to fool around with, you can keep your turn going. It might be something you need for a Storm deck, so here you get more mana. And then number 4 we have Archmage Emeritus. Just another simple card we're talking about what's practical, what's going to see play in several different decks. The Archmage here I think is just going to fit into so many decks because kind of like the artist, you get a trigger here off of Magecraft. So whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, you get to do something. This time you get to draw a card. That's ridiculous on a 4 mana wizard. That's also going to synergize with things like Azami. You get even more card draw and card draw is just more of the same in blue. But this way you get even more of it. Instead of just casting your cantrips and getting your expected card draw in blue, you're going to get an extra one. So it just keeps your turn going, allows you to do even more in a single turn. And then number three we have, and I'm surprised that not a lot of people are talking about it, Auric Lore Mage, or however you pronounce that, Auric, Auric. Regardless what it's called, Auric Lore Mage is just ridiculous. You tap it to search your library for a card and you put it into your graveyard and shuffle. If it's an instant or sorcery, you get to put a plus one plus one counter on Auric Lore Mage. That right there is just Entomb on an activated ability that you can use repeatedly. It is a tap ability, so that's the only thing holding it back, but still. You have Entomb on an activated ability on a creature. A reasonably costed creature for Commander, by the way. And something that's necessary in so many decks to combo. Something that could be necessary in the future if Flashback becomes something that you can take advantage of in black. We already know that Dredge is, so you could put your Golgari Grave Troll in your graveyard. It doesn't really matter what card it is. You just put it into your graveyard, you search your library for a card, and that's it. There's no restriction outside of that. Fantastic card. My lists are a little bit different, again, because I don't just go for what is the most overwhelmingly powerful card. If it's linear, then it's not going to see future play. It's going to see a lot of play initially in a linear strategy, and then it's going to burn out, you know? <laughs> Auric Lore Mage, I think, is something that's going to fit into a lot of decks for a long time. And then number two, we have probably the craziest card in this whole set. I really think this is just... it's nothing that we've seen before. But it's going to fit into every single deck that wants to play it. Wandering Archaic, or you could cast the other side, Explore the Vast Lands. Now, Explore the Vast Lands is not really something I would consider for this list on its own. We're really here for Wandering Archaic. <laughs> I mean, we get colorless cards again, they're not the Eldrazi, but I swear to god I thought this was an Eldrazi at first. Whenever an opponent casts an instant or sorcery spell, they may pay 2 mana. If they don't, you may copy that spell and you may choose new targets for the copy, so this is kind of like your other tax abilities, Smothering Tithe, Ristic Study. It's going to be in a similar category, however, I don't think it's going to be as much of a staple as those two, but you could fit this into literally any deck. Instants and sorceries are cast all the time. That means someone has to pay an extra two mana for their demonic tutor. If they don't, you get to copy it. So it makes a lot of the staples in the commander format so much worse. It really hurts your opponent by making it easy for you to get the same advantage without really having to do anything but just sitting on this creature on the field. In Explore the Vast Lands, I shouldn't say it's useless, but by comparison, you're probably not going to want to play it. It's more of a group hug card, each player looks at the top 5 cards of their library, reveals a land card and or instant or sorcery card from among them, then puts the cards they revealed this way into their hand and the rest on the bottom of their library in a random order. Each player gains 3 life, so not really as good as the other side here with Archaic. And before we go on to number one here, we do have some honorable mentions. I think this is a pretty cool set. We have Extus, and I know this is one of the cooler cards that we saw, but its ability really isn't all that strong. It might be a fun commander to play around, but that's really what kept it off this list. And then we have Mila and Luca. I think this is a pretty cool commander option. Giving you what you want in Boros colors. Boros has been typically weak in commander, but if you get card draw, you can really hurt your opponents. We have Rowan and Will. I think they're really good for instance and sorcery strategies. 
But outside of that again, I mean, planeswalkers are everywhere. They don't really offer that much new. And outside of the triggered ability that you got with Professor Onyx, none of them just really screamed out to me like, you gotta play me in Commander. We have culmination of studies, this is probably one of the riskiest cards, you gotta risk it for the biscuit, but the reward is insane, you exile the top X cards of your library. For each land card you get a treasure, for each blue card you get to draw a card, and for each red card you deal a damage to each opponent. But I love it, I think it's gonna be great for Commander. We have Galazeth Prismari, not quite competitive EDH ready, but I think it could be a decent casual Commander option if you're looking to build around treasure tokens. We have Alamakis Lorehold, I think this is going to be a fantastic Boros Commander option. If you want to go for extra combat steps, you go for it. You get a Spellslinger Commander option in colors that don't typically do well with Spellslinging. So number one, we have Fervent Mastery. Is this the new gamble? Competitively speaking, no. It's not going to see play in those decks in CEDH, but everywhere else in red it should, if you're playing mono red. You want these tutors, you want these random tutors. They're risky, you will have to end up discarding so it's not always ideal. Some decks you don't care about discarding and filling your graveyard, so that's fine. But with Fervent Mastery, you have a 5 mana sorcery, but you can pay 4 mana instead rather than paying the full 5. And if 4 was the cost that you paid, an opponent discards any number of cards and then draws that many cards. You search your library for up to 3 cards, you put them into your hand, you shuffle, and then discard 3 at random. Now at first I was kind of like, I don't want to give my opponents any card draw with this one, but it is discard to draw, which isn't as beneficial to as many people as you might think. If this is mid to late game, you just choose an opponent who doesn't really have many cards in their hand, and then big whoop, they might end up with one card or two cards that don't really make much of a difference. You get Gamble here, but for three different cards in your deck. You don't have to reveal them, unless those cards are discarded off of this. Red has more than just Gamble when it comes to tutors, but the tutoring has been pretty specific in what you're able to search up. So here we at least get another Gamble-like tutor, where it is essentially going to be your typical black tutor where you don't have to reveal, but you do have to discard, so there is a lack of precision there. It's fantastic though, this is exactly what Red needs just to even the playing field, if only just a little bit. So anyway, let me know what you think about the top 10 cards from Strixhaven School of Mages. Overall, I think this is a decent set. Didn't really know what to think about the set going into it, but I am pleasantly surprised. I think there are a lot of decent cards in here. So as always, if you enjoyed the video, if you like the content, hit that thumbs up button, share, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. Void here signing off, see you all next time.